a special talk. Uh, today we have a special talk of uh, Yannick in the Knest uh, about uh, one of the greatest mathematicians of the 20th century and founder of uh, modern probability theory, Andrei Nikolaevich Kolmogorov. Please, Yana. Thank you. So, uh, this is the talk about Andrei Kolmogorov. The title is Andrei Kolmogorov, a universal genius. And so there are many reasons why I would like to, to give such a talk. And I will, as a foreword, I will give some of them. Uh, so the first one is that he's really an outstanding mathematician. And here you, you can see the quotation of Vladimir Arnold, also a very famous mathematician, that uh, Kolmogorov, Poincaré, Gauss, Euler, Newton, only five such lives separate us from the origins of our science. So only because of this, uh, uh, it is a, a, a very good topic for, for a talk. On the other hand, this year is the year of the 120th anniversary of Andrei Kolmogorov, and his birthday was just a few days ago, okay, a couple of weeks ago. And there is a third reason why I have prepared such a talk about Andrei Kolmogorov. Um, so the reason is that <clears throat> he is my the so-called Dr. Gross, Dr. Urgrossvater. So this is a, a German word. Uh, well, actually, in Germany, there is a kind of informal tradition that a supervisor of a PhD thesis is called Dr. Fa Father, so Dr. Father. And hence, uh, <clears throat> using this terminology, uh, Kalmagorov is my Dr. Gr grand Grandfather, because my uh, supervisor, Dr. Father Smolanov, uh, his supervisor, Dr. Father, was Shilov, his supervisor was Gilfant, and his supervisor was Kalmagorov. Um, but uh, Smolyanov always said that he has uh, he had two supervisors, one official, Shilov, and an official one, but the most uh, important one was Famin. So there is also this chain connecting Smolyanov and Kolmogorov. And also <clears throat> those days when Kolmogorov was, at, uh, was very active at, at the Moscow University, he influenced uh, not only his direct uh, students, but also all colleagues and students at, at the department. So, so this connection also took place. Okay, so there, there, may, there are many reasons for me uh, to, to, to prepare such a talk. So let us um, know some things about Andrei Nikolaevich Kolmogorov. So we start with the very beginning. Uh, he was born in Tambov uh, in the year 1903. Uh, so why in Tambov? So actually, <clears throat> his mother and the family of his mother was living in, in Yaroslavl. And uh, at, at that moment, uh, his mother was on her way from Crimea to, to Yaroslavl. And she delayed on the way because it, it is a quite long way. And she visited her friends in Tambov. And there, suddenly... Uh, this event occurred, so the the, the Andrei was the, the child Andrei was born, uh, but his mother has died during during the birth process, and uh, Andrei was taken by the family of his mother and grown there, and he was adopted of uh, by one of her sisters um, Vera Yakovlevna Kolmogorova, and <clears throat> I would like to quote uh, the following. Uh, so Kolmogorov was born on 25th April 1903 in the town of Tambov, where his mother, Maria Yakovlevna, uh, had been delaying on her way from Crimea. She died in childbed, and the responsibility to bring up the child was taken over by her sister, Vera Yakovlevna Kolmogorova, an independent woman who held high social ideals. She passed this over to her nephew, uh, raising him in the sense of responsibility, independence of opinion, intolerance towards idleness and poorly performed tasks, desire to understand and not just to memorize. So this is a, a quotation of, of Kolmogorov partially. Okay, <clears throat> so his mother was um, one of the six daughters of um, Yakov Stepanovich uh, Kolmogorov. He, he was a landowner, a big, uh, um, very rich um, and uh, noble landowner, and he was a, a district head of all nobles in, in uh, Yaroslav. Um, the father of Andrei Kolmogorov was Nikolai Matveyevich Katayev. <clears throat> he was one of two sons of a priest. 
he was actually living in Moscow, but he was um, ex ex expelled from Moscow because of his participation in, in a so so social revolutionary organization. And as he was moved uh, to Yaroslavl, where he met uh, the mother of Andrei Kalmagorov, Maria. And uh, so the, the parents, Maria and Nikolai, they were not um, married. And um, by the laws of Russian Empire those days, uh, the child in this situation uh, had no right to 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 have a family name of any of the, his parents, so he could not be neither Kolmogorov nor Kataev, and he could not have patronic name, Nikolaevich. So uh, in this uh, so in this situation, it was support that the child takes the name and uh, family name and patronic name of his godfather. His godfather was uh, a brother a brother of Maria Yakovlevna. Uh, Simeon, uh, sorry, Stepan Yakovlevich Kalmagorov. So uh, the grandfather of Andrei Kalmagorov had six daughters and one son, Stepan Yakovlevich. So by the laws of the, those days, uh, Andrei should be Andrei Stepanovich Stepanov. Uh, but later, where, after the revolution, uh, the, the, there were new laws, and because of these new laws, it was possible uh, to, to give him uh, the family name Kalmagorov and the patronic name of his father, Nikolaevich. Okay, <clears throat> by the way, the name Andrei um, was given by his mother in, in advance, uh, and this name is devoted to Andrei Balkonsky, the main character of uh, the Roman uh, peace and war of Lev Tolstoy. Okay, so the father, so as I said, so after the birth, uh, Andrei was taken by, by, by the family of of his mother and was grown there. And actually this six ounce um, uh, took, um, did it very well, but um, yeah, his father was practically relieved of parenthood. He, and the father um, suffered this and uh, wanted to, to become closer to a child with the time, but it was not realized because he has died in the year 1919 in, in the civil war. Okay, so let us go further. Childhood. So, so his childhood, and Andrei Kolmogorov spent in a family estate or country house in a small village Tunoshna near Yaroslavl. So he, his aunts uh, were with him, and for him and for some other uh, children of this village, they have organized a kind of a school and made it as modern as possible with a lot of innovations. Uh, in teaching, all, all, all new ideas in teaching were uh, implemented there. In particular, this school had a um, school journal where uh, young uh, Kolmogorov published his um, um, creations. In particular, his, um, he, has, he has created his own tasks and, and published there. For example, like follows. How many ways uh, can a button with four holes be sewn on if it is enough to fasten it through two holes? So a combinatorial task, which he has invented himself. So there is um, a quotation of Kolmogorov. So I would like to, to quote in English, uh, in Russian as, as, a, as in original, but you, you can read in English what, what is the quotation. So, радость математического открытия я познал рано, подметив в возрасте 5-6 лет закономерность. So, this regularity. So, this regularity says that each natural number squared is equal to, which each natural number n squared is equal to the first n odd natural numbers. Okay, so this he has noticed himself. Okay. So, I, in the age of seven years, he, together with his adaptive mother, moved to Moscow in order to get a real good education. And he started his studies at a private gymnasium. And again, a quotation by of Andrei Kolmogorov. Многие школьники состязались между собой в самостоятельном изучении дополнительного материала. Иногда даже с коварными замыслами посрамить своими знаниями менее опытных учителей. Well, this is this quotation. And actually, um, by many school children, he meant uh, mainly himself, because his the, the most favorite um, joke was uh, to come at the blackboard at the uh, 
lesson of physics and to present uh, a, again a new model of perpetual mobility. And um, the, the young teacher was not able to find the mistake. And, and he did it regularly. So many, many new models of perpetual modeling was presented and um, in a very unpleasant way for the teacher because um, no, no, no mistake was found. OK. Um, actually, the first scientific interests of Kolmogorov were um, biology and Russian history. Uh, nevertheless, he was one of the best in uh, in mathematics in the school. And and, and now I, I read again a quotation of um, Tomagorov in English. By this time, many, my abilities for mathematics had already manifested themselves to a large extent. I solved difficult problems. And in theory, I went much further than school programs. I studied higher mathematics from articles in the Encyclopedic Dictionary of Brogaus and Ifron, which is not very easy since these articles were not of an educational nature, but rather of a reference type. But a well-formed idea to become a mathematician, a researcher making serious discoveries in, in mathematics myself did not come to me immediately, rather at the age of 16. Okay, in the age uh, in in the year 1917, the revolution occurred. Uh, Kolmogorov was 14 years old those days, and uh, uh, and uh, when he was uh, talking about himself, um, he he um, often said that the year so the, the age of 14 years was very essential for his intellectual and uh, spiritual development. And again, a quotation uh, of Andrei Kolmogorov, and I will again uh, read it in Russian, and it is written in English. В 11-12 лет я затратил немало труда на собирание подробных сведений о необитаемых островах Южных океанов, так как собирался вывербовать выходцев из разных стран и организовать на этих островах некое идеальное государство, для которого даже написал Конституцию. Но в 13-14 лет такие занятия были бы уже дурашливостью. К тому же наступил 1917 год, и мы все товарищи по школе вдруг стали взрослыми. Well, um... So silly ideas. So, so what actually means this uh, silly ideas in this context? Does it mean that um, at the age of 13, 14, uh, just uh, uh, ch ch childish games are over? Or does it mean that he was dis disappointed with revolutionary ideals? Who knows? But what we know is that on, one, on the one hand, he is uh, all his uh, ounce. Uh, uh, were participating in the revolutionary movement. In particular, they were um, producing and uh, distributing uh, forbidden literature, so re re revolutionary literature. Um, and they even had some problems with police due, due to these activities. On the other hand, uh, in, in 1920s, so in 20 years, uh, on the question about his social background, Kolmogorov answered orally and in a written form that one of his fathers, one of his grandfathers was um, a nobleman and, and a chief noble uh, man, and another of his grandfathers uh, was a priest. So, so such statements were quite dangerous those days and could lead to difficult consequences, but he, but he answered in this way. Okay, so the life after the revolution became very difficult for everybody, in particular for, for the family of, of Kolmogorov, and he has to start, uh, he had to start uh, to, to work to, to gain some money. And he started to work at railway as a librarian and stalker. So what does it mean? So actually those days, there were a kind of library coaches, like a mobile libraries. So they were traveling with trains from one village to another and served as... Uh, as mobile libraries. And so uh, he was working as such a libra li librarian and uh, he also had to take care about his library coach and to, to keep it uh, warm. And so he was working also as a stoker. At this year, he also finishes his school. 
So during his work, he's preparing for exams, uh, for final exams uh, for the school. But uh, at the time when he was completely ready for the exams, he just got his school certificate without any exams uh, because the teachers knew uh, who he was. And, uh, and he was uh, very disappointed with the fact that he didn't need to, to pass any exams. Okay, so in 1920, he has started his studies as a student of Moscow State University at the Faculty of uh, Physics and Mathematics. Uh, again, a quotation uh, of Kolmogorov. Uh, it is not written here, so I will read it um, in English. Having passed the exams for the first year in the very first month, I have received the right for 16 kilograms of bread and one kilogram of butter per month. This, according to the situation of that time, already meant complete material well-being. I had clothes and I made myself my wooden soled shoes. So, so th this was the situation. Okay, so, um, so he was studying uh, at the Faculty of Physics and Mathematics, but nevertheless, independently on that, he participated at scientific seminar of uh, the leading specialist in Russian history, Professor Bakhrushin. And uh, yeah, in, in the frame of this uh, seminar, he, uh, Kolmogorov did his own research in Russian ancient uh, history. So I will uh, read a few words about this. Um, so Kolmogorov did serious scientific research on 15th, 16th century manuscripts concerning agrarian relations in ancient Novgorod. In the 20s, he made a hypothesis on the way that Upper Tilega, so it's a so it's a region on the north of Russia, was settled from very um, early times, and this conjecture was much later confirmed by an expedition to this area. Okay, so so he really did some research in, in history, and he has presented his results at the seminar of Bakhrushin. and uh, he got a critique criticism during this uh, presentation during his talk that uh, a single justification is not enough for a definitive conclusion, in spite of the fact that he really used some mathematical methods to analyze these manuscripts. So as a job, Magorov told later that uh, it was exactly the reason why he has chosen mathematics, not history, because in mathematics, one proof is enough for a uh, definitive final conclusion. Okay, so um, at the Faculty of Mathematics and Physics, he, uh, um, he visited lectures of very prominent mathematicians of those days, and not only those days, uh, by, by, uh, so teachers were outstanding mathematicians like Luzin, Ureson, Alexandrov, Stepanov, Hinchin, Vlasov, and so on. And uh, so he, those days, uh, a very big influence was was um, spread by by the research group of Professor Luzin and and uh, Dekan Magorov uh, also started uh, to work in the research group of Professor Luzin. Okay. Mm. So let let me mention some of his uh, first results. Even already his first results made him uh, internationally recognized. So the, the first results are in the theory of trigonometric series, in the probability theory, and in, in the intuitionistic logic. Namely, um, in 1923, uh, Kolmogorov has constructed an L1 integrable fun function whose Fourier series diverged almost everywhere. In 1926, he has constructed uh, an, an L1 integrable function whose Fourier series diverges everywhere. And these results were uh, against the uh, hypothesis, uh, against the conjecture of losing and uh, leading mathematicians in this domain of those days. So, so these results may, may, may made was really a, a surprise for all the specialists and made him recognized all over the world. Uh, together with, um, together with uh, Hinchin, he, um, he writes some, uh, some results on, um, uh, on improbability theory. It is about uh, on convergence of serious um, 
with random uh, elements. And in 1925, he uh, he is interested in 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 uh, intuitionistic logic, and I also would like to to quote. So I quote very heavily the biography of Andrei Kolmogorov written by Paul Vitani. Uh, it is in English that, that makes everything much, much easier for me. <laughs> okay, so Kamagorov got interested in mathematical logic in 1925 and published a paper in, mathemat in, in Mathematischer Zbornik on the law of the excluded middle, which has been a continuous source for later work on mathematical logic. This was the first Soviet publication on mathematical logic containing very substantial new results and the first systematic research in the world on into it into its anistic logic. Kolmogorov anticipated to a large extent uh, Hayding's formalization of intuitionistic reasoning and made a more definitive correlation between classical and intuitionistic mathematics. Kolmogorov defined an operation for embedding one logical theory in, into another. Using this historically, the first such operation, now called the Kolmogorov operation, uh, to embed classical logic into intuitionistic one, into, into into scientific logic, he proved that the application of the law of the excluded middle or in itself cannot lead to a contradiction. Okay, so so you see all, all the results, they are quite outstanding. So from the very beginning, uh, what else can I add? Uh, so those days at mathematical department, there, there was a possibility. So after finishing, uh, after following a lecture course, instead of uh, passing an exam, it was possible to replace this exam by, by writing a, a scientific paper with new results on on the domain of uh, of okay, on the topic of of the lecture course, and uh, Kolmogorov actually did it fourteen times. So fourteen times, instead of uh, passing exams, he has written a scientific paper with new results on the topic of these lecture courses. Um, later on, it turned out that uh, one of these works contained a mistake. And um, there is a quotation of Kolmogorov, which I know from this quotation, I know from my uh, supervisor, Alex Malanov. The quotation is as follows, that each decent mathematician should have at least one paper with a mistake, and at least one paper with an unimprovable mistake. So, well, this is can be a, considered as a joke, but but still, this is a quotation of Andrei Kolmogorov. Okay, so um, after graduating Moscow State University, he continues. Uh, he stays there as a PhD student, again in the research group of Luzen. And after graduating uh, the, and getting his PhD uh, title, uh, he. Uh, got a position as a research associate at the Institute of Mathematics and Mechanics. Uh, it, it, there was a, a strong competition. It was the, the, the only, the unique open position. And there were 70 students graduated uh, the university. But in spite of this heavy competition, uh, Kolmogorov got this position. And since that time, his life and his work was always connected with Moscow State University. Okay, scientific heritage. So one of the most prominent quotations of Kolmogorov is as follows. There is only a thin layer between the trivial and the inaccessible. Mathematical discoveries are made in this layer. Well, in this thin layer, Kolmogorov succeeded to do the following. So following central blood of mathematics, uh, Kolmogorov has uh, 384 publications, including uh, 52 books, 20 contributions as editor, and nine further contributions. He is cited 7,411 times in 62 fields, and he has 146 co-authors. Um, moreover, so if, if you remember just at the very beginning, so uh, he has died in 1987. Uh, but if you see the list of publications, you realize that there are further publications after his death. Uh, how could that be? So, so actually, after his death, his disciples worked out his archive and discovered many unpublished results. And in spite, in spite of the fact that they did it much later after his de death, nevertheless, the results still remained 
new and important. So many further subsequent publications were published after his death. And in particular, I would like, um, yeah, I would like to show you. So I, I, I stop sharing and and share again another window. Uh, this is a window of central blood. Uh, so here it is. So do you see central blood? Yes. Yes, yes we see it. Okay, perfect. So so um, so this is the the statistic that he has so many publications. Actually, he has much more publications because not all publications in Russian are uh, taken into account in Western databases like Central Blood or Mathematical Reviews. Uh, so, but by other sources um, uh, like uh, like but bibliography in, in some books devoted to Kumagorov, uh, the bibliography contains more than 500 publications. Okay, but what I wanted to show you on this page, uh, so, so first of all publications by year, so if you see this diagram, you, you cannot uh, notice uh, if he has died at all or not. So, so the publications are very uh, regular till, the, till, till 2009, and even afterwards, uh, even in 2019, there is a publication, selected works, so it's a uh, edited by Shiryaev. This is one hand, on one hand. On the other hand, um, here is the, the citations by year. And you see that, so uh, the influence, uh, what, uh, the influence of Kalmagorov uh, over the time does not decay. So it grows up. Hence, hence you see all, all that he has done is, uh, is still de actively developing and is getting so his uh, his uh, his work is getting to be more and more uh, important with the time. So this is this is what is quite interesting for me, and I wanted to show it to you. And again, cited in sixty two fields, cited by um, eight thousand of authors. So this all is somehow interesting. Okay, so coming back to to the slides. Okay, so let us go further. Uh, and I would like to quote again uh, Vitani for Vitani. Uh, uh, for now, let me mention a, a non exhaustive list of areas he enriched by his fundamental research. The theory of trigonometric series, measure theory, set theory, the theory of integration, constructive logic, intuitionism. Uh, topo topology, approximation theory, probability theory, the theory of random processes, information theory, mathematical statistics, dynamical systems, automata theory, theory of algorithms, mathematical linguistics, turbulence theory, celestial mechanics, differential equations, Hilbert's 13 problem, ballistics, and applications of mathematics to problems in biology, geology, and the crystallization of metals. In over 300 research papers, textbooks, and monographs, Kolmogorov covered almost every area of mathematics except probably number theory. In all of these areas, even his short contributions did not just study an isolated question, but uh, in contrast exposed fundamental insights and deep relations and started the whole new fields of investigations. Okay, so again, uh, a very important quotation of his doctor father, Nikolai Luzin, which was written in a letter to Andrei Kolmogorov. I will read it in, so in Russian, if I find it. Um, well, I'm not sure if I if I find it in Russian, but but it's strange. I have seen it just just today at my preparation. Okay, so let me read it in English. So you have been given a high spirit, and I want you to resolve its strength for the things that very few can do. So it was about um, the, how Luzin estimated his uh, student, Andrei Kolmogorov. OK, a some non-exhaustive list of mathematical property, which was uh, somehow, which was created by Kolmogorov or created under very high influence of Andrei Kolmogorov with a high contribution of Andrei Kolmogorov. Uh, not everything from this property belongs to probability theory, but still, uh, everybody knows a lot of 
results like Kolmogorov theorem about the existence of stochastic process, Kolmogorov free series theorem, Kolmogorov uh, Smirnov test, uh, Kolmogorov equation, Chapman Kolmogorov equation, Rao Blackwell Kolmogorov theorem, uh, and so Kolmogorov zero one law, and so on and so forth. Okay. Let us go further and let us focus on, 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 on the, the heritage of Kolmogorov in the domain of probability theory and stochastic processes. Uh, and I will also write uh, uh, quote uh, some, some words of Paul Vitani. Um, so his interest so Kolmogorov's interest in probability theory originated in 1924. His first steps in this area was performed jointly with Hinchin. In 1928, he succeeded in finding necessary and sufficient conditions for the strong law of large numbers to hold and prove the law of the iterated logarithm for sums of independent random variables under very general conditions on the summons. In the publication, A General Theory of Measure and the Calculus of Probabilities, 1929, he put forward a first draft of an axiom system for probability theory based on the theory of measure and the theory uh, of functions of a real variable. Such a theory had been first suggested by Barrell, was first developed by Lamnitsky, and received its so successful final form with Kalmagorov's classic treatment in 1933. So this is this publication, Grundbegriffe der Wahrscheinlichkeitsrechnung. Uh, so this is the first page of this publication, and I'm very happy to say that I have this okay, a reprint of this of this book. Uh, it, it was a miracle for me that, that I've got it, but, but I have it. Like so, I understand it is a personal uh, present of And Andrei Kolmogorov to me. Um, well, and this publication. Um, was actually a solution of the sixth problem of Gilbert, na namely uh, the, the what was formulated in the sixth problem of Gilbert. So the aim is to, to, to axiomatize uh, theoretical physics in the same way as geometry. So axiomatize such things as, in particular, as probability theory as a base for statistical mechanics. Uh, so this motivates, so, so this quotation of Vladimir Arnold, so for the theory of probability and the theory of stochastic processes, Kolmogorov did the same as Euclid did for geometry. He constructed a rigorous axiomatic theory that provided reliable mathematical justification for this field of knowledge. So I continue uh, to, uh, to quote uh, Paul Vitani. So this result, um, so, um, so this publication in 1933. Um, so much important work on probability theory had already been done without benefit of foundations. But this little book, Foundations of the Calculus of Probabilities, published in German in 1933, immediately became the definitive formulation of the subject. This determined not only a new stage in the development of probability theory as a branch of mathematics, but also gave the necessary basis for the creation of the theory of random processes. The subject of his paper, this one, of this, of this paper, Fundamentals of the General Theory of Markov Processes. It was here that the basic theorems on infinite dimensional distributions, now the logical foundations for the rigorous construction of the theory of random functions and sequences of random variables, were first formulated. The involved ideas lie at the heart of the modern theory of random processes. They form essential concepts in the very idea of control theory and play a vital role in Kolmogorov's later synthesis of information theory and ergodic theory. Kolmogorov's many contributions in the theory of probability and statistics made him generally acknowledged as the foremost representative of this discipline. Uh, so concerning, concerning this paper, Fundamentals of the General Theory of Markov Processes. So in this paper, uh, he laid the foundations for the modern theory of Markov Processes. And uh, the so the, the quotation of Gnidenka concerning this publication 
In the history of probability theory, it is difficult to find other works that changed the established points of view and basic trends in research work in such a decisive way. In fact, this work could be considered as the beginning of a new stage in the development of the whole theory. This theory had a few, a few four, four, four runners, Markov, Poincaré, Bachelier, Fokker, Planck, Volkhovsky, Chapman. Their particular equations for individual problems in physics informally obtained followed as special cases in Kolmogorov's theory. Okay, uh, a long series of subsequent publications followed by, Ka by Kolmogorov and his followers, among which a paper by Kolmogorov dealing with one of the basic problems of mathematical statistics where he introduced his famous criterion, Kolmogorov's test, for using the empirical distribution function of observed random variables to test the validity of a hypothesis about the uh, true distribution. In general, Kolmogorov's ideas on probability and statistics have led to numerous theoretic developments and to numerous applications in present-day physical sciences. Okay, so this is what I wanted to quote. So what else I wanted to quote? Um, so here are some list again of, of things which were developed uh, by, by Kalmagorov or under his influence, strong influence. So infinitely divisible distributions, some limit distributions, uniform central limit theorem, stationary processes, processes with stationary increments, branching processes, Kalmagorov, Petrovsky, Piskunov diffusion, birth and death processes. Okay, I, I'm not sure. So the time run fast. On the other hand, I'm not too fast. Is it okay? My speed. It, yeah, yes, it, it is okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay. 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 So there are some other results which are not from uh, probability theory, and since I'm not the expert in 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 in, in all these branches, I uh, again will will uh, use the biography written by Paul Vitani to 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 clarify. Uh, so Kamagorov has uh, many substantial results in, in other domains. So. Um, um, Wait a minute. Yes, so another area uh, he turned to at uh, the 30s years was topology. Simultaneously with the uh, uh, American topologist Alexander and also topologist Gordon, and independently from them, Kolmogorov discovered the notion of cohomology, cohomology and founded the theory of homological operations. The work of Kolmogorov and his school on the deep connections between topology, the theory of ordinary differential equations, celestial mechanics, and the theory of dynamical system determined to a, consider to a considerable extent its present state. So this is about these results. Then uh, uh, turbulence. Uh, at the end of 30s, Kolmogorov's attention was drawn to the me mechanics of turbulence. In the hands of Kolmogorov and his school, the theory of turbulence obtained an accurate mathematical form as an applied chapter in the theory of measure and function functional spaces. With great physical intuition, in two short papers in 1941, Kolmogorov uh, presided in concise mathematical form ideas about the structure of the small scale components of turbulent motion of fluids and gases. Latent in early experimental work, particularly uh, uh, latent uh, given in early uh, experimental work, particularly by Taylor. These hypotheses imply many quantitative results that are widely applicable. What goes on, for instance, within the turbulence that occurs in the wake of a jet aircraft. Some of the quantitative some of the quantitative relations arising have the character of new laws of nature, like Kolmogorov's law of two thirds. So this Kolmogorov's law of two thirds uh, states that in each developed turbulent flow, the mean square difference of the velocities at two points is proportional to the two thirds power of their distance. Of course, if the distance is not too small or not too large. Kolmogorov made also quantitative predictions on the base of his theories that were later confirmed by experiments. For example, the stratified structure of the ocean, an effect known as pancakes. Kolmogorov's 1941 contributions to the theory of turbulence are perhaps the most important ones in the long and unfinished history of the theory of turbulence. 
Okay. So it was about the turbulence. Now um, concerning the Hamiltonian systems and Kant theory. So these are these years. Um, in 1953, 1945, he made a seminal contribution to the fundamental problem of classical mechanics, identified 50 years earlier by Poincaré in his study of the motion of planets around the sun. Neglecting all but one planet, one deals with an integrable problem that is well understood. However, the small effects associated with gravitational interaction between the planets introduces a profound qualitative change related to the fact that the equations are now non-integrable. In attacking this problem, Kolmogorov's great achievement was to develop a general theory of Hamiltonian systems under small perturbations which has several practical applications, among others, in the study of magnetic fields and plasma physics. This, this work also spawned, uh, spawned together with improvements of Kolmogorov's pupil Arnold and by Moser, what is now known as the study of Kam theory. Kam, this is a kolmogorov arnold moser theory. Subsequent computational studies uh, apply confirm Kolmogorov's insights and have opened up the enormously fruitful field of chaos of in dynamical systems, which is currently attracting much attention. This studies led, for example, to better weather forecasting. So again, so this is a big topic, but uh, away from probability theory. What else? Then solution of the 13 problems of Hilbert. Um, mm -hmm. So together with Arnold, uh, Kolmogorov settled Hilbert's 13 problem, disproving the conjectured outcome by showing that a continuous function in any number of variables can be represented as a composition of continuous functions of a single variable and addition. Addition is a, a unique function of two variables, which is used. So this is... Um, um, Okay, the, so the statement which contradicts to the uh, conjecture of Hilbert in his 13 problems. Okay, and then also a big topic in the research uh, life of Kolmogorov is uh, complexity theory. It is his late research ages, uh, 60s, 90s, complexity theory. Um, so, uh, while in previous years Kolmogorov used concepts of information theory and mathematical sciences, um, mm -hmm. so probably I, I should say something about information theory. Um, yes, we have some time. Okay, so um, in the 50s, um, Kolmogorov also started to work on the theory of automata and the theory of algorithms. Together with his uh, uh, student Uspensky, he formulated the important notion of Kolmogorov Uspensky machine. He supported the up and coming field of kibernetics, theory of computation, against heavy initial antagonism in the USSR. Many USSR computer scientists are Kolmogorov students or, or distant pupils or pupils of Kolmogorov pupils. Um, so this is the first uh, um, note and second note that uh, in, in 60s, 70s, so he uh, focused on complexity theory and while in previous years Kolmogorov used concepts of information theory in mathematical sciences, now it was the turn of information theory to be reconstructed using the theory of algorithms, incidentally closing the circle of his research by giving logical algorithmic foundations to the theory of probability. Algorithmic information theory or Kolmogorov complexity theory originated with the discovery of universal descriptions of finite objects and a recursively invariant approach to the concepts of complexity of description, randomness, and a priori probability. So I guess the next slide gives us a, a big, uh, a long quotation of Shiryaev who explains what I, I just uh, said. So at the end of his creative activity, Kolmogorov announced the beginning of a grandiose program to understand the unity of deterministic and random phenomena. The world is uniform. Most deterministic phenomena have a certain instability. And sooner or later, they begin to behave as if they were random. And vice versa, random phenomena follow strict laws. At the center of this new understanding is the concept of complexity. Practically all directions of Kolmogorov scientific research have come together in this concept. 
his work in functional function theory, mathematical logic, information theory, automata theory, approximation theory, theory of dynamical systems, classical mechanics, theory of turbulence, and of course, probability theory. Kolmogorov's research biography appears as a body of ideas, theories, and results unified by a philosophical and scientific approach. Okay. Um, so Kolmogorov has made a very uh, essential scientific um, contribution, mathematical contribution to the science of the uh, not only 20th century, but uh, I would say the in general mathematical science. But he has also very other some important um, contributions, namely uh, in his teaching thing, in the th in his teaching activities. In particular, he has uh, uh, established a scientific school, a very big one. He, ha he had eighty two direct students and four thousand descendants. So here are the list of some students or descendants who are somehow related to probability theory or very, very well known. Arnold, Bachvalov, Berenblad, Baravkov, Bulinski, Dabrushin, Dinkin, Famin, Gilfan, Girsanov, Gidenka, Martin Lev, Minos, Nikolsky, Pinsker, Prokhorov, Sheryaev, Sinais, Karahot, Shilov, Tikhomirov, Uspensky, Vitushkin, Zolotarev, Zhurbenka, Yeglon. Here, Skarahot is not a doctor, a doctor son of Kolmogorov. Um, the, the supervisor of Skarahot was Dinkin, and the supervisor of Dinkin was Kolmogorov. So Skarahot is the descendant. Uh, and I also had a question, what about Varadan? Varadan um, uh, seemed to, to, to consider Kolmogorov as a um, supervisor. So I, I, I have checked this information, and I have um, found that Kalmagora was the uh, referee for, for a PhD thesis of, of Varadam on the opponentum. So this is the only thing which I know about Varadam and Kalmagorov. Okay. Um, uh, some quotations. So again, they are written here in English and I will read them in Russian. So, quotation of Kolmogorov. Мне повезло на талантливых учеников. Многие из них, начав работу вместе со мной в какой-нибудь области, потом переходили на новую тематику и уже совершенно независимо от меня получали замечательные результаты. So, so you see, Kolmogorov didn't think that he is very cool and all others are not, not nothing. So he really has, um, appreciated the talents of his students. Uh, next um, uh, quotation by Sebastianov. Um, one of his students. В Московском университете Калмогоров, которому принадлежали выдающиеся достижения в самых разных областях математики, был кумиром учащейся молодежи. Его всегда окружала атмосфера научного поиска, поэтому его ученики были полны творческого энтузиазма. Uh, one more quotation of his uh, student, Владимир Арнольд. Uh, um, so Kolmogorov never explained anything, just posed problems and didn't chew them through. He gave the student complete independence and never compelled anyone to do anything, but always first waited to hear something noteworthy from the student. He stood out from the other professors I met by his complete respect for the student's personality. And the last quotation of Knudenka, again a student of Kolmogorov. Um, I will read it in Russian. Он был предан науке ученика, обладал исключительным талантом замечать способных людей и способностью не жалеть времени для их воспитания. And one more quotation about uh, the relations between Kalmogorov and his disciples. Uh, it is a quotation of Shiriaev. It is written here in two parts, and I will read it in Russian again. Поразителен тот воспитательный эффект, который на себе испытывал каждый, соприкасавшись с Калмогоровым. Поражала необычайная щедрость, которой он делился своими идеями и знаниями. Поражала гражданственность его позиции в понимании роли ученого своей страны. Удивляла его исключительная общечеловеческая культура, знания литературы, поэзии, музыки, истории, архитектуры. Окей. So I, I will read uh, in Russian two more quotations uh, of disciples of Kolmogorov about, about his uh, 
a relation to, to, to his uh, work and his uh, students. Um, quotation of Barakov. Была поразительной сама его преданность своему делу. При полном отсутствии каких-либо конъюнктурных мотивов, это была, на мой взгляд, одна из самых сильных сторон Андрея Николаевича, во многом объясняющая, конечно, вместе с его необычайно глубоким и, широ и широким видением всей математики, то огромное влияние на научную молодежь, которую он имел, влияние, равное которому мало было в истории науки. One more quotation by Bulinsky. Um, again, on Russian. I will, I will try to, uh, to, to, I will read it in Russian and then translate. Um, so in Russian. Я часто спрашиваю себя, что же было главное в общении с Андреем Николаевичем? Если ответить кратко, то главное было то, что хотелось стать лучше. So English translation. I ask myself often, what was the most important in my communication with Andrei Kolmogorov? If to answer briefly, the main was that one wanted to be, to become better. Okay, so this is the relations between the teacher and the students. So he did a lot for, 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 for organization of uh, mathematical uh, studies on, on, on many levels. So this is the quotation of Kolmogorov himself. Only someone who is fascinated by, by it and perceives it as a living, developing science can teach mathematics really well. So he took this uh, activity as a very important one. So he also participated in, in writing textbooks for secondary schools. Uh, he uh, participated in uh, organizing Olympiads and um, conferences for young researchers. Uh, he uh, opened a special school, boarding school for mathematics number 18, also know, known as Kolmogorov School. Uh, for, for talented uh, young students uh, to, to, to learn mathematics. He also, together with a colleague, he has uh, founded a popular mathematical, physical and mathematical journal for youth. It, uh, this um, journal was, is called Quant, uh, and Kolmogorov was uh, the head of mathematical department in the um, editorial board of this uh, journal. Quant and he himself uh, wrote articles for this journal, so popular journal for, for youth. Okay, this is a photo of Kolmogorov among students of, of this uh, Kolmogorov school. So, so as I said, as I said um, he, he, uh, his attitude to his work was very responsible. And uh, there are a few quotations of, of Kolmogorov concerning this subject, so I again read them in Russian, so first one. Очень существенно в науке, как в поэзии, музыке и т.п., что человек, принадлежащий к моральных качествах, воспринимает свою работу как особенно ответственный долг. Я жил всегда руководствуясь тем тезисом, что истина, благо, что наш долг – ее находить и отстаивать. Это, these are these two quotations of Kolmogorov. Well, so now the official CV, so to say. So he, he became a professor of Moscow University at 1931. At 1933, he, he was a director, director of Institute of Mathematics and Mechanics. In 1934, he uh, uh, was one of the founders of the journal Russian Mathematical Surveys, Успехи uh, in Russian. Uh, in 1933, he has founded uh, and led a new chair, Chair of Probability Theory at uh, Department of Mathematics and Mechanics at Moscow University. In 1938, he has founded and led a new Department of Probability Theory at Stiklov Mathematical Institute in Moscow. Uh, in 1949, um, he was leading a department uh, of mathematics in the editorial office of big Soviet encyclopedia or, or great Soviet encyclopedia. So he was uh, the responsible for creating dictionary. So which mathematical notions should be mentioned in encyclopedia. He was responsible for uh, choosing the authors uh, for, for articles. He was writing articles himself. So he has written as an author as a single author, he has written uh, more than 100 articles for this encyclopedia. He has corrected uh, the text of other authors. 
So he was responsible for, for, the, whole, for the whole mathematics in the frame of this uh, great or big Soviet encyclopedia. In the years uh, from uh, 54 till 58, he was the dean of the Faculty of Mechanics and Mathematics. Uh, in, in 56, he, uh, he was a founder and the chief editor of the journal Theory Probability, Theory of Probability, Theory and Applications. I think in Russian, no, Theory of Probability and its Applications. Um, in 59, he was a founder and the head of the editorial office of mathematics and, me and mechanics in publishing house of foreign literature, Mir. Uh, in 60, in the in 1960, he he has founded and led a, a new lab, a laboratory for stochastic and statistical methods at Moscow University. In 1964, he became a president of Moscow Mathematical Society. In 1976, he has founded and led uh, a new chair, chair of uh, chair for mathematical statistics at Moscow University. And in 1980, he has founded and led a new chair, chair for mathematical logic at Moscow State University. Uh, yeah, so, so you see, so it is incredible to, to I, I think even, even one line in this CV is already a big success for, 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 for a mathematician, I would say. But yeah, a lot of lines uh, with great achievements were for the whole of life. And again, uh, a quotation of Arnold. I will read it in Russian, this quotation of Arnold. Pushkin сказал как-то, что он оказал на юношество и российскую словесность больше влияния, чем все Министерство народного образования, несмотря на полное неравенство средств. Таково же было влияние Калмогорова на математику. Я познакомился с Калмогоровым в студенческие годы. Тогда он был деканом механика математического факультета Московского университета. Это были годы расцвета факультета, расцвета математики. Уровня, которого достиг тогда факультет, благодаря прежде всего Калмогорову и Петровскому, он более никогда не достигал и вряд ли когда достигнет. Калмогоров был замечательным деканом. Он говорил, что надо прощать талантливым людям их талантливость. И я бы мог назвать очень известных сейчас математиков, которых он тогда спас от исключения из университета. So this is the quotation of Arnold and a quotation of Калмогоров to this subject, again on Russian. Пока мне удавались лишь те виды организационной деятельности, где мой авторитет основывается на умении показать личный пример. Well, actually, I would say that this holds for, for any field of activity to anybody. Okay, of course, uh, yeah, you see how impressive work was done by Kolmogorov. And of course, this work was recognized. He was a member of Soviet Academy of Sciences, American Academy of Arts and Sciences, Leopoldina, Royal Society of London, as well as of the French, Romanian, Hungarian, Polish, Polish and Dutch Academies of Science. He got honorary doctorate in Paris, Stockholm, Warsaw, Budapest, and so on. He got the highest prizes uh, in Soviet Union, for example, Lenin Prize, uh, Stalin Prize, Chebyshev Prize, Lobachevsky Prize, Seven Orders of Lenin and Heroes of Socialist Labor. He got international, the highest international prizes as, as Balsam Prize for Mathematics and Wolf Prize. He is several times uh, has given plenary talks at ICM, so International Congress of Mathematics. Uh, so in, in, 1940, uh, in 1954 in Amsterdam, he was given a plenary talk about uh, what is now known as CAM theory, general theory of dynamical systems and classical mechanics. In uh, 1958 in Edinburgh, he, he was given a plenary talk at ICM. It was a talk uh, on functional analysis that is a completely different domain, not as here. In ICM 1962 in Stockholm, he was giving a plenary talk on optimal approximation of functions. Again, a different, completely different topic. He was given a talk at ICM 1966 in Moscow, but I have not found the, the title of the talk or any further information. And in ICM 1970 in Nizza, he was also giving a plenary talk, combinatorial foundations of probability theory. And um, um, so it was. It is my translation from Russian. So of course the true the, the true title is in English, but I have not found it so far. 
So in Russian, it is combinatorial основание theory of вероятности и исчисление вероятности. So this stochastic calculus, this is kind of my, my, my very approximate translation. Okay, so this is about the contribution. Uh, so th this is about the professional life of Andrei Kolmogorov, professional life and contribution of Andrei Kolmogorov to mathematics as a scientist, as a teacher, um, as a personal, uh, as a personality, as a manager, as an editor, and so on. So now some strokes to for the pet portrait, some some personal things. So in, in 1942, this is just in the middle of the war, Second World War, he married his school friend Anna Dmitrievna Yegorova. Those days uh, she had uh, a son, uh, he was 15 years old, uh, he, uh, he, and he wanted to become a, a painter as his father, painter Ivashov Musarov. But uh, so afterwards, um, he changed his mind and yeah, influenced by Kolmogorov, he decided to be a mathematician and he studied at Moscow State University and worked many years there at Moscow State University. Uh, Kolmogorov and Anna Dmitrievna, they, they, they didn't have their joint children. Um, they were always together and uh, she has died only a kind of uh, around one year later after, after his death. Um, well, uh, what else? Um, one more important person in the life of Andrei Kolmogorov, uh, Pavel Alexandrov. Um, so they were connected by a lifelong friendship started, started in 1929. So Alexandrov was uh, seven years older than Kolmogorov. Um, Alexander was one of the teachers of Kolmogorov, so, so Kolmogorov follow, followed lecture course given by Alexandrov. Uh, but those days probably they were not um, uh, friends. Um, uh, but they both were, were very active and enthusiastic mathematicians, strong mathematicians. They both uh, liked to travel and were interested in, uh, actively interested in, in practicing sports. Um, uh, they had a, like a business trip, Dienstreis, a business trip, uh, a research trip uh, in Göttingen and some other towns of Europe in these years, and um, and they uh, kept uh, kept to to work uh, together. And, uh, they kept to be uh, very close friends for the whole of life. Uh, they created a kind of scientific commune. Uh, namely, they have bought um, a house in a so country house in the village Kamarovka. Um, so those days in Soviet Union, uh, it, it was not that, that that. So the wealth of people was not very high. So it was really uh, impossible to buy a village. It, it it takes too much money, and it was not possible for the majority of people. I mean, for every for all people. But uh, together with Alexandrov and um, and also with some other people, um, uh, jointly they have bought a house in the village, and they made a kind of a conference hall or workshop hall from this house. They worked there. Uh, there, there were always a lot of um, uh, colleagues and students coming there for for scientific discussions or workshops. I don't know how to to specify it in English. Better way, no better way. So even one of the foreign colleagues, uh, after visit of uh, after visiting this this place, said that, that this is like Oberwolfbach, Oberwolfbach in, in, in Germany. So a very um, prominent uh, conference hall, not conference hall, but the place, training center, scientific training center in, in Germany. But the difference is that Kamagorov pays for all drinks himself. Okay, so I guess this this uh, scientific community also was very important for the life and, and development of the scientific school in Moscow those times. This allowed to, to socialize and the, the community and to make the community really the community. Okay, and um, yeah, Kalmagoro spent uh, like, like a few days per week in Moscow at, at Moscow State University where he was teaching and then a few days he was in, in, in Kamarovka where he was uh, doing science and worked together with, uh, with colleagues and students coming there. 
and also it was very convenient for for making sports. So yeah, so as I said, Kolmogorov liked to, to sport very uh, very much. He 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 liked to travel. He he liked mountains. He liked to walk, and who could and he could walk for long distances. And uh, it was a kind of tradition to 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 go for a walk or sky sky uh, or, or seeing uh, with the students. And uh, yeah, it was quite exhausting for students uh, if they were not in a good physical form to follow Kalmagorov in these uh, sportive events. Yeah, so so you see, so he liked sw swimming, uh, rowing, and and so on, so forth. And he 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 tried to be fit till the very late of his age. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, at the end of his life, he got Parkinson disease and was uh, almost blind. Uh, and those years, um, again, a kind of quotation, he, he said that um, he started to estimate more, not only uh, mathematical talents of his students, but also his, uh, their personal features. Um, so those days, uh, the, the students of Kalmogorov took care about him. It was very well organized by Arnold and other disciples. So each student had his or her own time uh, and uh, duty to, to take care about Kolmogorov. Okay, so uh, the very last slide, again, a quotation of Tikhamirov, a student of Kolmogorov, about Kolmogorov. And again, I would like to read it in, in Russian. Андрей Николаевич Калмогоров принадлежал к числу тех несравненных гениев, которые украшают жизнь уже самим фактом своего существования. Одно лишь сознание того, что где-то на земле бьется сердце человека, наделенного столь совершенным разумом и бескорыстной душой, окрыляло, дарило радость, давало силы жить, уберегало от дурных поступков и вдохновляло на благие дела. Well, I think, uh... The students of Kolmogorov uh, are the best uh, evidence of, of his life uh, and his contribution, not only scientific, but also personal one. And the, this is the, the last slide. So th these are the references. And probably one thing which I would like to add. Um, uh, that... Um, a concerning mathematical um, property, we have listed a mathematical property, but there is also a property called a principle of Kolmogorov. This is not a mathematical property, it's just a principle. Uh, I know this principle again from my supervisor, Alex Malanov. This principle of Kolmogorov um, uh, says, uh, uh, gives the rule how one should um, um, examine students and, and, and estimate the results of these exams. So the principle of Kolmogorov says that if the student answers between good and very good, uh, you should put him very good. Um, uh, and if the student answers between um, bad and very bad, like bad but the exam is passed, or very bad and the exam is not passed, then you should put bad, very bad, the exam is not passed, in order to give um, a chance to the student to study and to, to read this material, to learn this material once again. So this is the principle of Kolmogorov, which I follow in all my teaching life, already 20 years. And, and so, well, actually, I myself feel the influence of Kolmogorov in, in, uh, so during my studies at Moscow University. So, um, and still, I feel how it was and uh, so still um, um, professors of Moscow State University somehow are influenced and, and uh, follow the same style well, as much as it's possible, as it is possible, of course, as um, was made by Kolmogorov and probably first um, also Luzin. So yes, I'm finished. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. First of all, uh, thank you for uh, such a, a very interesting and detailed talk. And I must say that uh, it is uh, a very great job because uh, there exists usual opinion that mathemat every mathematician wants to speak about their own research. Uh, 
<laughs> but uh, of course this is uh, uh, exclusion and uh, thank you very much maybe somebody have comments or questions please I, I want to add only one uh, uh, small comment that uh, really, as you said, Komogorov has a, uh, as a master, has a very big influence on everybody uh, who, who was familiar with him. Uh, for example, I uh, have a friend, Mergen Shabozov from Dushanbe, uh, who was a, a just small boy in the small village in mountains where one day he, he met uh, Komogorov and Alexandrov just uh, uh, making hiking and uh, they uh, asked him uh, whether uh, he can solve some small mathematical problems. After this, they uh, helped him to uh, enter the mathematical internet. It was uh, in St. Petersburg. And after this, uh, Mergen Shabozov became to be a doctor of science in approximation theory. This is just one yeah. example of his uh, influence on everybody who who, uh, who was happy to meet him. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm much. sorry, then I have a comment. I think Kolmogorov and Alexandrov visited Dnipro for exactly. a few years exactly. and established yeah. the whole school there. Exactly. Is they they, they uh, began the trip from Kiev. They offered a board and uh, uh, do this uh, trip uh, by the river Dnipro. So it, <laughs> it was uh, uh, always uh, some union of sport and mathematics. Yeah, they, they kept on fit in all senses, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you, Jana, again. It was very interesting, and uh, uh, I think that it was very nice idea to bring uh, this talk to our seminar. Uh, okay, uh, next uh, speaker at the next week uh, will be, I think, to help with some point diffusions. Am I right, Georgi? Georgi. Okay, uh, I think that uh, I am right, so we'll, uh, we'll see some geometrical diffusions next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, and bye. Bye, see you. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you, Thank you for the nice talk. Goodbye. Welcome.